I talk a lot about up and coming modern bands that are killing it. And I've said this before and I will say it again. We live in a shoegaze dominated type of musical world right now. Everybody knows at this point all the pioneers in the shoegaze game. But I feel like we never really talk about the bands from the 2000s that also did some shoegaze action. That is basically what this whole video is about. 90s shoegaze bands versus 2000s shoegaze bands. Before I get into the video though, please like and subscribe. That will help me out a bunch. And if you can please click that bell notification, you'll get alerted whenever I drop a new video. You'll stay up to date and you won't miss any action. In this particular video, I'm going to be talking about a bunch of differences, some similarities, and just the overall vibes within all of these bands in the 90s and the 2000s. And yeah, before I get into the video, though, please let me know what era you're into more. Currently, I'm more into the 2000s shoegaze band type of thing, and I'll explain myself a little bit further in the video. Let's start off with the basics. I just mentioned these bands a couple times, and I'm going to mention them again. My Bloody Valentine, Slow Dive, and you know what? Shout out Ride as well, another pioneer. Shoegaze is a type of sound that really relies on heavy distortion, a lot of guitars piled on top of each other with distortion, some reverb, some low vocals that just become very melancholic and give you some echolocation type of vibes. I believe the greatest shoegaze band ever is My Bloody Valentine, and Slow Dive is kind of in that same vein. I wouldn't even be mad at you if you said Slow Dive is better than My Bloody Valentine. Slow Dive does have way more, I feel like, storytelling abilities compared to My Bloody Valentine, and My Bloody Valentine famous for their loveless album influential to this day a lot of people love that album and it makes sense it's very futuristic when it was released in the 90s and i feel like that's the very reason why i believe that my bloody valentine is the greatest shoegaze band of all time because this influence is generational there are bands to this day that are trying to not emulate but kind of throw their own twist on it and honestly it's just a fun time when you're playing with a bunch of distortion and just loudness but there's also that melody that comes with it a lot of people love that and it's legendary at this point enough about the bands that really made the whole thing there were also a bunch of people in the 90s that were influenced by those albums yes there's still some great shoegaze going on in the late 90s more specifically and one of those shoegaze bands that i want to talk about is allison's hail and Allison's Halo reminds me a little bit more of Slow Dive and that's probably because there's not like this very fat distortion like a My Bloody Valentine and a lot of modern bands are influenced by this band as well so there's an influence factor in that shout out Allison's Halo and I'm not done talking about them don't worry Allison's Halo kind of has this indie rock aura I guess about them even though they're a shoegaze band and at the end of the day shoegaze is just alternative rock and this is something that that I really found very interesting. I feel like shoegaze in the late 90s heading into the early 2000s, that's kind of my sweet spot in terms of my favorite types of shoegaze bands. And that's because the, every shoegaze band ever has a different take. Every shoegaze band ever does not sound the same, even though a lot of people might think that. You can see it nowadays that a lot of people in a lot of modern bands try to make that shoegaze pop with a more aggressive sound. And that's more what this new metal aspect. And I've talked about that as well because that's going around everywhere everybody and every upcoming band wants to use that sound which i don't have a problem with late 90s early 2000s shoegaze bands kind of have that uh ideas i guess or kind of has that overall essence obvious statement is that every band is different all of these bands have different flavors and allison's halo is one of those bands the next band that i'm going to be talking about is a band called should and i just talked about this band in my last video and that was in a hidden gems video hidden gem bands and should is a shoegaze band from the late 90s and this band really excites me because they remind me a little bit of the band swirlies and I love swirlies and a lot of people do as well. And if you know what I'm talking about, I love the sound of having this scrapbook energy type of diary energy where it's like notes you wrote down from a younger time, but you're just bringing it alive with your music in a shoegaze aspect. Should is kind of like that in a way. It just utilizes indie rock and shoegaze to the highest degree. All I want to say, because I've talked about should, 
last video. This next band from the 90s that I want to put some respect on, and a lot of people really like this band. We only know that they dropped a couple stuff in the 90s, in the late 90s, and this is the band Ozine. Every time I read this name, I feel like it's not supposed to be pronounced that way. I've heard people say it that way so many times, but I will always read it as Ocean because that just sounds like the better name. Ozine just sounds kind of stupid. No offense, but ocean ozine whatever this band is very short-lived they have an ep on spotify and it's really unfortunate a very short-lived band but a lot of people really are infatuated with this band i remember stumbling upon one of their songs on youtube a couple years ago but yeah shout out them because i don't know i wish they had more music out but who knows, maybe they have some stuff in the vault. Shoegaze bands from the 90s had a lot of different bands and a lot of great bands that I missed, but I want to talk about the 2000s Shoegaze bands, and I am on this side more than anything, or as of late, because it kind of gives me that DIY feel. Kind of like a band is just in their bedroom and they're just like, hey, let's plug in some stuff and try to record something. And a lot of the bands on my list from the 2000s kind of give me that indication. And I'm a fan of that stuff, I guess. The first band I want to talk about is Astro Bright. And this band is the most bedroom, shoegaze, top tier production type of band to listen to with the shoegaze stuff, man. And I guess this band has a lot of aura and the tunes are not missing one bit. The thing that really sticks out to me is the production. This stands out a lot and when I have my headphones for some reason it's just popping out like crazy and it's beautiful music at the end of the day. Astro Bright is at the top of my 2000s shoegaze bands list and a lot of people would agree with me. The next band I want to talk about is a Danish band I believe and they're called Rumskib. Rumskib and I learned from Google Translate that that basically means spacecraft or spaceship and this band reminds me a lot of cocteau twins and i guess it's that twangy type of chorus pedal or something that they got going on and it just reminds me so much of the cocteau twins and i realized right now that there's not a lot of bands that sound like that which is really interesting i guess a lot of people are kind of scared to not copy but kind of use that influence and put it onto their music which is interesting there should be more bands that sound like cocteau twins and just for that that's something very different that's something i don't think any 90s band tried to do back in the day this band is from the 2000s and i think mid 2000s one of their albums was released in 2007 and i will say that they're probably one of the more popular bands or the most popular band on my list from the 2000s the next band on my list is a band called stella luna and there's a lot of noise man there's a lot of distortion ruckus but in the most beautiful type of way for my ears and it doesn't hurt my head or anything like that and you can tell that my bloody valentine was an influence and there's nothing wrong with that and i'm not saying that all these bands are crazy like the best bands you'll ever hear in your entire life i just think they're really really good and uh, i hope you guys can listen to most of these bands or all of them if you want at least on spotify they have a 2002 ep and that's more than enough music but i guess it's not more than enough music because they're really good and i don't know if they're releasing more material but based on the year that that was released and there's nothing else released from that band but yeah that ep is called stargazer you guys should check that out and the last band that i want to talk about on my 2000s list is the band called sway and i really like this band as well they kind of have that slow dive aspect and more than anything it feels like this band sonically and instrumentally and just as a whole band feels more of like this hypnotic wave of beautiful noise that's headed your way and that's what I really love about this band and they kind of don't really focus too much on the vocal aspects even though the vocals are there but I also love whenever shoegaze intertwines the vocals and kind of just blends everything together because it just adds that more of an aspect where it's like what's going on what is this mysterious noise that's headed my way. Oh, I think I heard a word or some words in there. Or was that just a guitar riff? I love that stuff. Sway has an EP released in 2003 on Spotify called The Melia Pink and Green. And that cover is very therapeutic no it's just very beautiful and just artistic that's something else that i've noticed with late 90s and early 2000s i guess bands in general it doesn't have to be shoegaze bands but i love the colorization at the end of the day it's just a bunch of influences from the early 90s time period with my bloody valentine slow dive all these legendary bands and i understand if you're like man these bands now or the 2000s bands weren't that good i totally understand that and my point of view is different from your point of view so yeah i don't know what 
side are you on? I know that the 90s bands have a very, very big advantage in terms of the iconic bands from this genre, subgenre, whatever. But I've just been having a lot of fun listening and finding these new bands that I've never really heard of until I just thought of this video idea. And yeah, I love finding new music all the time. And you guys know that. That kind of wraps up my video though. Let me know what you guys think. Are you on the 90s side? Are you on the 2000s side? Like and subscribe. Keep the music alive. Shoegaze will never die.